Hello and welcome to a video on the VGT small signal model. In this video we will have a look at how we implement the BJT as a model so that we can determine the amplification easier input and output impedances um, as a step towards actually designing the amplifier. Okay, so we're going to look at the purposes of DC and AC analysis. Um, then the BJT is an amplifier, so what role the Q point plays and what do we mean with linear region. And then the actual small signal model, there is two, the hybrid pi and the T model. And then the different parameters around this model that we are using. Okay, so the purpose of AC analysis is to determine the parameters, um, the amplification parameters using the Q point. So the transistor will have a specific input and output impedance and amplification with a certain Q point. Okay, the Q point will also determine your amplifier's maximum output swing capabilities. So everything that moves, all the dynamic parts is the AC analysis. DC is the more static thing. So with the DC analysis, you try to determine the Q point. Okay, and the Q point in turn goes into AC analysis. And in this video, I'm roughly going to assume you already watched the DC analysis slash design video that was before this one. Okay. So when working, the big thing is don't mix your AC and DC analysis. You do your DC analysis, you draw a line, you do your AC analysis. Or else you're going to get confused with some of the values and try to use it in the AC analysis. I've seen this many times. Right, so the only thing going forward from the DC analysis to the AC analysis is typically the collector current and the collector emitter voltage. The rest you can forget at that point. Right, now we are first going to look at all the analysis methods in the next video, but we require this model um, to be able to design properly. If you can analyze properly, you can design properly because then you know which parameters will affect what. Okay, so big requirement there is that you need to be able to analyze something in your sleep if you want to be able to do a proper design. Okay, so let's look at the BJT as a basic amplifier. We already know that the BJT is a current controlled current device, but IC and the VBE voltage is related. Okay, so we need to bias our transistor at 0.7 volts, right? And that in turn gives us a collector current and a collector emitter voltage, and that is our Q point. Okay, so these two are the static elements. If you have a look at this, you'll notice that the Q point of VCE is roughly sitting in the middle of this graph. This top point here is VCC. Okay, so for this particular amplifier, designing for VCE comes from dividing VCC over 2. So that is that this Q point sits in the middle of this line right here. Okay, so transistor needs to be on and we need to have our Q point sitting in the middle of this line and be stationary there. Now, if we adjust our VBE downwards, right? If we lower this voltage, let's say there is an input signal of some sort. 
if we lower this voltage, when our VBE reaches 0.5 volts, from the DC characteristics, we learned that this is where our transistor kind of starts to switch on. So when we go below 0.5, our transistor will switch off and we are in cutoff mode. Okay, so the transistor is off and the voltage sitting at this point is basically VCC that you will be measuring. Okay, so this source going downwards, VCE is going upwards. So we have an inverting kind of effect from the input of this transistor to the output of this transistor. And you can also see it because this line has a negative gradient. Right. This section here in the middle, we will have this kind of change and the center here seems to look like a straight line. That is what we call the linear region. But not everything is linear. We still have these edges that is kind of round. Okay. When our VBE goes beyond a certain point, our transistor will go into saturation. So IC will become very large and the transistor will be forced to be at 0 0.3 volts and if you push it even further it will go into deep saturation at 0 0.2 volts. So cutoff and saturation here is where we use our transistor as a switch but for amplifiers we are interested in this gradient here in the middle. Okay so you can already see that a lot of things will be dependent on IC on some form of VBE and our VCE value. Right, so if we bias our transistor at a certain VCE and VBE and we insert a very small sinusoid on our base, we will see that our VCE voltage changes by a lot. This is input. This is output, and input, uh, sorry, output over input is gain. Okay, so the change in VCE over the change in VBE will be our gain. Now, the textbook, and you guys are using, if you're a, uh, just a viewer, from now on, the change in VBE will be called VPI in our model. And this value should always be less than 10 millivolts peak. Okay, so the value of VPI should always be very small. Hence, we call this the small signal model. If you have a look at this line here on the edge, it is not very linear anymore. Okay, so if VBE is too large, we will have distortions on our output signal because then we're not multiplying with a constant anymore. Okay, so the Q point gives us a specific place to work from with some input um, qualifications, if I can call it that, for our VBE. Right. Now, we must set up a model for us to model this behavior mathematically and make life easy for us so that we don't have to work with all of these variables all the time. Okay, so as a note, we have AC and DC is always mixed on a graph like this, but we want to separate the two. We already did DC analysis. So that is this half of the equation. AC analysis, we only want to look at this side of the equation. Since we can work with superposition, that is why it is added to one another. Right. So the small signal model. We know that the BJT is a current controlled current source, but we have a relation between the collector current and the VBE voltage, the base voltage. 
Okay. And that means we have a transconductance. A transconductance is a voltage controlled current source. So we can model our transistor as a voltage controlled current source. So with a change in V pi, so this is without the DC, we can have a change in the collector current. Right. So that means we have a current source, and a current source usually has in parallel with it, according to Norton, a infinite impedance of a very large impedance. So the transistor has an output impedance, and for us to convert the current flowing into our transistor or V pi into something useful, we need an input resistance. Okay, so from the base side, that will be called R pi, and if we're viewing from the emitter side, that is will, will be called RE, or the emitter resistance. Right, so the two models is based off perspective. Right, so the hybrid pi model is an input resistance with V pi across it, and V pi controls the current source. Okay, so that's a transconductance, and in parallel with the current source, it's, it is its output impedance. So you can just straightforward replace the transistor with this model, that being the base, the emitter, and the collector. We will mainly use the hybrid pi model. There is places where I will use emitter resistance, RE, but the model that I use will still be the hybrid pi model because you can convert between the two models okay now here is a nice trick to learn on easy um, to learn early on which will make your life easy any impedance viewed past this x will always be multiplied with beta plus one okay so anything connected to the emitter viewed from the base side will appear larger of beta plus one. And that is also IB, its relation with IE is beta plus one. Okay, same goes looking into the emitter. Everything including R pi in that direction will be divided by beta plus one. So one direction is a multiplication, and the other direction is a division. And from the emitter, we do not see in that direction. Right. We consider this to be a virtual ground. That will make life very easy setting up equations for the models. Okay, so we need to populate this model. We have three parameters R pi, GM, R out. Same goes for the T model. As I said, the T model is just a perspective from the emitter. So we have RE and this X moved. From the base side, everything will still be multiplied with beta plus one going forward past this cross and moving backwards across it you will divide by beta plus one so it is just a matter of perspective where for the t model or the hybrid pi model okay so there is a conversion function between re and r pi and that's dividing or multiplying with beta plus one Plain and simple. Right. So the three parameters that we are interested in is the output impedance, which is based off the early voltage of a transistor. So for different VBE values, we get VCEs that we can plot like this. If we extend all these lines backwards, they will meet in the same point called minus VA. Okay, so this is usually very high voltage 
50 volts, 100 volts, 30 volts, whatever. It's the imaginary point here in, in the distance. Okay, so the change in VCE and the change in the collector current, that will be our output impedance of our transistor. But this is based on differentials. So if we differentiate, we will get some constant. And that constant is here in the distance right here. And at a static point, I see Q. So our output impedance is the early voltage divided by our Q point collector current. Where VA is a process parameter, you will typically not find this on the data sheet, but if you go and look up the SPICE model, you will find the early voltage of your transistor. Okay, so if you don't have early voltage information and you're designing or analyzing, you just assume VA to be infinite. And then R out will be infinite and R out will disappear from your model. Okay, but if you have early voltage, you can work with it and it will give you more accurate results in the end. Okay, so that's one parameter down. The second parameter is the transconductance. Now, transconductance is the change in VBE and the change in IC, and here in the middle there is a small linear region which we will use of our transistor so that we don't have any distortions. So it's the change in the collector current divided by the change in the base emitter voltage, and that boils down to, if we do the differential ICQ over VT and VT is 25 millivolts at room temperature. We discussed the thermal voltage in video 2. Right, and that is the transconductance, converting the voltage to a current. The BJT input impedance, R pi and RE, so that is small VBE over IB, so basically the um, AC input and or VBE over IE for our small RE. Okay, and if you convert those into equations, that's beta over GM or beta VT over ICQ. These two should be known. Beta should be known from the data sheet. And if you drop the beta, you basically almost get your emitter voltage, uh, emitter resistance, sorry. Okay, so for a very large value of beta, that will be approximately 1 over GM. Okay, converting between the two, RE is R pi divided by beta plus 1, or if you want R pi, it's RE multiplied by beta plus 1. Okay, and there is our three parameters to set up our model. And we will have a look at analyzing different amplifiers in the next video. I apologize in advance, it will be a very long video, but it will cover all the amplifier types. And again, it will have tags so that you can jump to any one of the amplifiers which you want to view. Okay, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.